What's it like playing to a huge crowd at a big festival like that? Uh, it's fun. It's it's takes a bit of getting used to. I remember the first time was the big day out. And you came back and did the big day out? Yeah. Just one of I your remember, drinks? And one of the things... I'm just going to start drinking your water. Um, I remember that one of the things my manager actually told me that I, I tell this story a lot because it was a good piece of advice. Um, uh, it was a big day out. It was Brisbane. And I kind of blew the first show. I didn't do a great job because I was terrified. It's 30,000 people, 12 in the afternoon, and it's a big day out. It's the festival I grew up watching. And I went out there and I did an average job just because of my nerves. And the day, and then at Sydney gig, it was even more full on because it was like, it was uh, Sydney. It was Sydney. And, um, and I'll t there's two parts to this story. <clears throat> so he said the best piece of advice, which I tell other people if they ever have any problems, he said they paid their ticket to be rocked. They want, they've, they've come to be rocked. They're expecting, they're, they're, you're not giving them, you're not doing anything out of the ordinary in this scenario. Just go out there and be a fucking rock star. Act like a rock star, sing like a rock play the rock star. And that switched it on for me because I'm an actor. I was like, oh, I'll just switch on the character. Changed everything because then they weren't there to see me. They weren't judging me. They were judging the character and his performance and what he was doing and the notes he was singing and they were empathizing with his message and everything was about him. So that, that little bit of detachment makes it possible to put forward a show you got a microphone with a million watts of a pa talking to thirty thousand people that would intimidate someone that's a bit of a full-on situation so to be it to be if you walk up there and genuinely feel like yeah this is me i deserve this you're a dick like you're, if you <laughs> actually think like yeah i deserve to be in front of thirty thousand people with my little song that i wrote in the garage like no it's if you're not nervous something's wrong so <clears throat> i was terrified and he told me that, and I'm like, and the beautiful thing is, the second part of the story, which I loved, which is so the Australiana way of doing things, is that I got up there and I fucking killed it. I had a great set. I was just rock star. I was like, bang, rock star hats on. As soon as I walked off stage, take the rock star hat off. By the time we got to Adelaide, I'd done three shows in the rock star way, and my guitar tech overheard one of the stage hands talking about that fucking that sick pussies puppies some fucking band that they they made it in the states or something. And my guitar tech was like, oh, you're talking about sick puppies? I went, yeah. So what about him? He said, oh, have you seen the bloody singer? What a dickhead. Wow, oh, thinks he's fucking everything. Thinks he's amazing. Up himself, prick. And I was like, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Did my job. But I remember you also told me that that sensibility then <clears throat> lent you concerned about what you would wear and the styling that they would do to you. Think, no, this is part of the deal. Yeah. That meant, yeah, that's, that's, that took a lot of getting used to because when you have this when you're in this profession this profession if you're an actor it makes sense that people are going to have an opinion about what you wear and what you look like and the director's going to tell you about you you're being directed for the character yeah for the character and it's a stage show and it's not much different it's just a rock and roll soundtrack and it's your you happen to write the music that's about it but you're still a member of a production basically so when you're Used, I started this band and I was like, well, this is my band and my music and I have ownership of it and I put myself into it to this big degree. There's not that very little separation from me to what I've created and what I'm doing. So when someone comes in and says, change the jacket, you want to tell them to fuck off, right? It's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow because you're like, well, I did everything else, right? How come I can't wear the shit I want to wear and do that shit? And they're like, well, this is who I am. This is, yeah, like what you like everything else I did, but it's like, it's, I still battle with it. I still have this knee jerk reaction when even my closest friends are like, even if they come privately, they're like, just double check your hair. Your, your hair's really flat. The camera's not liking it. And I'm like, fuck you. I just want to say, fuck you. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't give a shit. Like I, I worked my fucking ass off to get in front of the camera. Don't fuck with me. That's I, really <laughs> pisses me off and, and it shouldn't. And it's like, it should be, I mean, this is, everyone deals with this. Every, especially artists. That's why, you know, there, there are rock star mentalities. You have Slash and Axl Rose and they're like, oh, they're trouble. They're not trouble. That's who they are. They don't, they're not going to listen to you telling them change your jacket. <laughs> they're not going to, imagine someone going to Slash, change your hat. Really? <laughs> it's not going to fucking happen. So... You want to be that, you want to have that type of vibe. And most importantly, the main thing is you just, you don't want to be a bitch. You, ha you got into this profession because you want to do what you want to do. You don't want to go to work and be told what to do. So when someone comes up and says, do what I tell you, there's a natural knee jerk reaction, but that is the business. And the, f 
the idea that you're not trying to sell something is a fallacy. You're doing every day, all day, every day. You're not, if you're only interested in making music, go to your basement and make the music and get out of my face. Like you're, you're trying to sell something. So sell it, make the moves you're to sell it. You're making a product. Yeah, you're creating a product. You have to look at yourself as a product because you are. And that's where, that's where people get kind of pissed off because if you're working with a guy in a band or a singer or a rock star or a writer or whatever, and they have this ego on top of it, which I, I have a bit of it left. I, a lot of it was knocked out of me during the last 10 years by this process that I'm talking about. It took a long time to come to terms with it. Um, <clears throat> but that the idea that you're not a product can kill you. You know, like you'll 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 spend your life not being a product. So, so are you trying... comfortable being a product now? No. Yeah, I I was saying to you earlier before the cameras were on, I went I went and spent a month in L.A. and uh, I I didn't really spend that much time writing music because I'm trying to sell what I'm doing. I'm trying to I have a new project and I'm trying to f and lots of people are interested in it, but I have to figure out the right way to sell it and turn it into the next project rather than being a song. It has to be a brand, a band, uh, uh, affiliated with certain types mm. of things. What's the, how are you cross-promoting it?